Hello there and welcome to the channel. Today we're going to be taking a closer look at the V5 Plus Autopilot from CUAV. Now this controller is designed to be used with both PX4 and Ardrapilot flight stacks. CUAV themselves are a company that make various autopilots and accessories based on the PX4 standard and are also a member of Drone Code. The kit we're looking at today also includes the Neo V2 GPS. Now the V5 Plus is an updated version of the V5 flight controller and it consists of a 32-bit ARM Cortex M7 F7 CPU running at 216 megs. It has 512 kilobits of RAM and 2 megabytes of ROM. It has triple IMUs with some of them isolated internally. It has a single internal MS5611 Barrow sensor and a single IST8310 compass module. Now obviously this is the internal compass and not the one as part of the GPS. Taking a closer look at the controller you'll notice the design is very familiar with a cube and a carrier board arrangement. On the bottom you have the main ports for GPS, telemetry, UART and CAN bus. Moving around to the other side you have a number of I2C ports and a DSU-7. You still have dual power ports as well as the standard RC servo ports on the other side. You also have analog digital connections as well as separate S bus and PPM inputs and outputs. There's an SD card on the side of the autopilot and below this is an SPI port for connecting external sensors over this bus. On the other side you have an S bus output as well as the USB port. Now this is actually a USB-C and this is where you connect it to the software for uploading the firmware. As mentioned, this kit also includes the Neo V2 GNSS module, which is an MAN module with built-in safety switch. They also include a nice little stand for installation as well. Now, this package includes all of the cables you should need to get yourself up and running. This includes a power module, which they include with the kit, which allows you to connect it up to your battery, an external USB port, a safety switch and buzzer module, an external Wi-Fi UART module, as well as an external I2C breakout board. Now the overall design of this autopilot is very similar to the Cube autopilot from Profi CNC and Hex. Now I have to say these two products are entirely separate and they are not compatible with each other at all. Whilst this is a Cube design it is not compatible with the Profi CNC ecosystem and it is basically just its own Cube and carrier board and at this time there are no other options boards or accessories that are compatible as far as I am aware. Just to show this that both cubes have entirely different connectors. On the left is the CUAV cube and on the right is the original cube from Profi CNC and Hex. And while that system has a large ecosystem of available carrier boards and options, the CUAV cube is only compatible with the carrier board it comes fitted with as far as I know. Just comparing the two in size with the orange cube with the built-in ADS-B on the right, you can see that they are very, very similar. And regards to space-wise, if one fits, pretty much the other one should as well. Because the V5 Plus is based on PX4, it is designed to be used with the PX4 Autopilot software. Now, if you don't know what PX4 is, it is similar to Ardrapilot in the sense that it is an open source autopilot software that is available to be used in both commercial use and standard use. Now there is some licensing differences between it and Ardrapilot, however the basics are that it is an open source control software to be used in autonomous vehicles. Now the best way to get yourself PX4 is via Q Ground Control. This is a open source ground station software designed for both Android, PC and Mac and it allows you to install both the software as well as do all the configuration as well. Now to set this up with PX4 as I said you will need to download Q Ground Control. Once you've got it downloaded and installed you will simply need to go to the firmware page connect the controller and then it will give you the list of options on the right hand side. Now you can install either PX4 or Ardrapilot via Q Ground Control and you can simply select the option that you want. If you choose Ardrapilot you can simply select the type of OS, the type of aircraft and the type of 
board that you want to install it on. Now I am using the latest beta version here and the standard release might look a little bit different. However, in this video, we're going to install the PX4 flight stack. So when you do select that, you also have the option to select the pro stable release, which is the current master, or select the current beta version. So you would simply click on the pro stable and if you click on advanced settings, it'll give you the option whether you want the standard stable version or the beta. Once you've done that, you would simply click OK and it will begin to install the PX4 firmware onto the autopilot. It takes normally a couple of minutes if your internet connection is OK and then it will erase what's on there download the correct version, install it onto the controller, and once you've done that, you will be ready to then do the configuration options. So now the firmware is installed, we can simply then wait for it to reconnect and then you need to configure it just like you would with Ardra Pilot. So the first thing you will need to do is select your kind of airframe and that is what type of vehicle you're going to be putting this autopilot on and there are a whole host of them available through the software for me i've selected the 450 flame wheel because that is what i'm going to do this build on there are also a number of configuration options preset in the software for you for various kinds of aircraft and frames if you want to do it but the first thing you're going to do as i said is select the type of vehicle you're going to use next you then have the center screen where you were able to calibrate the compass the gyros and all the sensors within the autopilot itself and you would simply step through them you've then got the radio screen options once that is done you can then go through to calibrate the sticks go through the flight modes set up the power options for the battery monitoring and go through all of the other options to get your vehicle up and running and ready to go now, Q Ground Control does make this fairly straightforward and easy. However, beneath the surface, there is a huge amount of options available to you. Just like Ardra Pilot itself, you have the parameters screen, which allows you to select all of the individual options in the background that are not as part of the standard setup routine. And again, you can just click on each one, set it to do what you want it to do. And as well as that, you've got all the developer and the other system options listed at the bottom as well, including UAV CAN. And that is pretty much it for this video. Overall, I have to say this is quite a nice kit from CUAV. The fact it is an all-in-one kit, which includes the autopilot, the GPS, and all the accessories, and you did it all in nice one box is nice. And the fact they also give you that Wi-Fi adapter in the kit as well is very, very handy because once you've got your firmware on board, you don't have to worry about it. You can simply put the Wi-Fi adapter in and then use it with that, and you can change all of the prams and everything. And that adapter does work with other autopilots as well you can use that on the cube and others as long as it's got the same connector and it is well worth a look now i haven't put this in a vehicle yet i'm going to be doing a build with this specifically over the next couple of months as i am with the other ones and we're going to be concentrating on px4 now the v5 plus is compatible with ardra pilot and px4 but it is more supported by the px4 community from what i've seen at the moment and as cuav are part of drone code that's sort of the direction it's being pushed and what I'm going to do is show you guys the build of this with PX4 and Q ground control as well but at the end of the day you do have the option to use both. Now the overall design of the autopilot is very similar to the Cube autopilot from Profi CNC and Hex. As I have said, this is not a Cube. It is not compatible with the Cube ecosystem as well. And whilst it is very, very similar, it's hard to deny that it isn't. It is its own system. And at this time, as I've said, it's not compatible with the carrier boards. The only carrier that I have seen is this one that comes from CUAV themselves and there isn't any others on the market that I've seen that you can use this with. However, that isn't to say system integrators haven't been building this square cube shape autopilot 
from CUAV into their units. Now, this carrier board is very well made, to be fair. Overall, it's metal. Overall, everything is. You know, it's nice and hard. There's no plastic anywhere. There are connections absolutely everywhere on this thing as well. You have more connectors than I've probably seen on any other autopilot, if I'm honest. You've got additional I2Cs, SPIs, separate ports, absolutely everywhere on it. And that is any good if you need it, but if you don't, they're not going to be used. But there are options with it as well and it is using that USB-C connector rather than that micro USB compared to most of the others too. Now comparing the specification of this to say the Cube Orange it's quite hard to do if I'm honest because there isn't as much information out there on the CUAV one as there is on the Cube. Now obviously the Cube Orange is a H7 where this is an F7, it has less RAM, it has the same amount of storage and whilst they do both have isolated IMUs I don't know how many of them are isolated on the CUAV and I don't know if they're heated either whereas on the cube we know they are and the reason is for me I don't think they're heated I could be wrong and the only reason I say that is when you've run the cube autopilot on the desk for say 15 minutes you can feel the temperature on the top of the cube whereas on the v5 it didn't feel warm to me it felt very much at room temperature so overall I'm not sure that they are thermally managed but I could be wrong on that one. Now, really, the V5 Plus is more like the Cube Yellow than the Cube Orange. And it should also be said that it doesn't have ADS-B built in like the Cube carrier board that the new Orange model comes with. But it is more like the Yellow with the standard carrier board than it is the Orange itself. However, it is very much based on that PX4 design and it is still following all of the same connections that these other units are using as well. Now, if you are looking for this kit, it is worth looking at, especially if you're going to be a PX4 user, because for me, that's where this one is really aimed at, and it is available to get. Now, I'll also put a link to it in the description of this video as well. Now, what autopilot to buy one versus the other, that's very, very hard for me to say. I've used a lot of the Cube autopilot gear, and I don't have too many issues. However, I'm going to be putting this one in a build with PX4 as well, and I will show you that in in the near future too, as well as showing you more on the Pixel Cubes and all of those other ones. Um, really for me, it comes down to what software you're going to use and what support you're going to be trying to get, because it should always be added that with any of the systems that the hardware is independent than the software. So the software is open source and very much community driven. So if you're having problems with the software, you need to go to them. And if you're having problems with the hardware, you need to go to them. But again, it does appear to be a very nice kit and hopefully I'm going to be talking about it a little bit more in the future. That's it for this video. Thank you very much for watching. Please do subscribe to the channel. I'll put a link to it in the description. I think 3DXR stock it as well and I will put a link in their forum as well. That's it and I will do another video again soon. Please do subscribe to the channel and check out all of the other videos we have available. They are also split into playlists to help you easily find the ones that are relevant to you. If you would like to support the channel, please check out the links that are in the description for each video. You will find the links for the products we've been talking about, and it's only by you guys purchasing via these links that allows us to keep making videos and buy products to talk about in the future. Please also check us out and follow us on all of the social media platforms such as Twitter, Instagram and Facebook. We're beginning to build these accounts up and whilst it is early days, I would appreciate it if you would like, share and follow us on these platforms. Finally, please also check out my website, www.madrc.com. Now, this is somewhere that we've been putting some of our blog posts and things like that over the last couple of years. So if you're interested in having a look, please do go check it out. That is it. Please do click that subscribe button. Thank you very much. And I will do another video again soon.